Speaker Becker. Thank you, members of the committee, for enduring a very long committee hearing. Thank you, Dr. Caraveo, for being on this bill with me, and thank you to everyone on all sides who came to testify. So as the old saying goes, when you can't attack the policy, you got to attack the process. And we have introduced bills year after year after year on these very subjects. You could have looked at the old bills if you wanted to know what was going to be in this one. You could have asked us. You could have shown up with your own ideas. But no one did. They didn't do it. Because the industry never wants to work with Democrats on our ideas, our communities, what our people need to feel better about oil and gas in their communities. It never happens. Over and over and over again, it doesn't happen. It was fascinating to me after November 8th to have people suddenly say, oh, we'd like to work with you. Okay, bring me your ideas. Well, we, we'll, we'll get back to you. We have met dozens of industry players over and over again. I have met with counties. Bring me your ideas. But they don't actually want to do anything in these areas. They didn't work with the proponents of Prop 112 and say, let's sit down together. They have not sat down with my county to say, let's work together. They have not done that with other counties who are saying, this isn't working for us. For years, these counties, these residents, these neighbors have been saying, this doesn't work for us. And industry has been saying, too bad, so sad. We're moving on. We're opposing everything that you guys put forward. So do you think that's the way to start a working relationship? To work together? But I have been bringing people to the table. But the trust? like, Hey, Casey, give me your bill so I can do my ad buys against it earlier than I already was going to? That's what you're suggesting I should have done? That doesn't seem very smart to me. It will take four weeks to pass this bill. Do you know how, legally how long it takes to pass a bill? Three days. Three days. So tell me, when you've done your stakeholder work, if you called every county on it and every local government and every special district, I bet not. I heard people tonight talk about the impact to severance tax. Do you know what the biggest impact to severance tax has been? When oil and gas sued the state and said, the way your statute is written right now, we're overpaying because we should be able to deduct exp expenses for everything under the sun. And the Colorado Supreme Court agreed. And we had to pay $200 million back to the industry in the last couple of years. Where were those local governments then saying, oh my gosh, our severance tax is impacted. They weren't saying that. Did Farm Bureau reach out to local counties and oil and gas to local counties before they filed Amendment 74 that would devastate state and local government? No. And when those counties said, this is horrible, don't put this on the ballot, did they say, oh, gosh, we should have consulted with you and now we're going to take it off the ballot? No. They didn't. The misinformation in this entire industry, I have a report. Any of you can ha have it from Legislative Council. Do you know how many jobs are in the, the mining industry in, in Colorado, the direct jobs? 21,000. It's in this report. You're welcome to have it. 21,000. There are more in tourism, more in hotel and lodging, more in professional services, you name it, 21,000. I care about those jobs, and I kept listening to hear people say what in the bill was going to make those jobs go away. What in the bill is going to make the jobs go away? Where in the bill is it written moratorium? Where in the bill is it written ban? Person after person testified, this is not a moratorium. This is not a ban. This is an option for local government to use local control if they so choose. And it, 
is a simple minor word change to the COGCC mission to say instead of promoting the industry, you are, go you are going to regulate the industry in a manner that protects health, safety, welfare, and the environment. We have lots of environmental laws that have very similar language. And we still have had oil and gas throughout those environmental laws. We've still had aluminum smelters built and, and, and uh, lots of industrial activities. They have survived, they have thrived under the Clean Air Act, under the Clean Water Act, under the Endangered Species Act, under the Superfund law, under TSCA, the, the toxics law. The industry still exists and they still thrive. Oil and gas makes doomsday predictions. You heard it right here in 2008. There were new regs passed, and oh my gosh, the industry suffered. But no one mentioned, guess what happened in 2008? Guess what else happened? There was a dip. Guess what? It was the biggest recession we have seen since the Great Depression. And oil and gas prices took a huge dip. And you want to blame it on regulations that said you have to consider wildlife when citing oil and gas? Seriously? Seriously? Give me a break. The doomsday predictions, no one actually tied it to the bill ever. And then they say, oh, and there are no sidebars and there are no setbacks. Those were explicitly written. Maybe people should actually read the bill. Because in the bill, it says you have to regulate in a reasonable and necessary way. People kept trying to conflate a list that the COGCC director put together to say, here are the permits I want to see as an effort to enact a moratorium. Are you kidding? He's just saying, I want to actually see these before my name is stamped on them because they're actually elevated concerns about them. That doesn't seem unfair or rational. That seems to be a prudent exercise of his authority. Oil and gas keeps ignoring the, the urban and suburban communities that are raising these issues as they have been for several years now. They're not going to be in any better of a position. It is prudent for oil and gas to come to the table in a real way. And I appreciate that they are now doing it because they weren't before. So don't tell me that we are being irresponsible. We have been wanting oil and gas and local communities have been asking oil and gas to come to the table for years to change things. And legislation has been run that time after time after time was killed by the industry. I don't think that's a smart approach at all. And now they're decrying process. We weren't consulted. Amendment 74 is the worst ballot measure we have seen in Colorado ever. I wasn't consulted on that, were you? That was intending to destroy our local governments? And you're going to attack this for process? A bill that's going to take four weeks to pass because they didn't get to see the draft before it was introduced? If you, as any legislator, have ever always, always, always passed your, let anyone who wants to see your legislation before it was introduced, good for you. But I'm guessing it's not happened. I'm guessing not every affected party that's ever wanted to be seen to see your legislation has actually seen it before it was introduced. But guess what? There was a roadmap to all of ours because it's pretty much all been introduced. And we talked to them over and over about it. Here's what we're doing forced pooling, orphan wells, local control, change the OGCC mission. We're going to take out the word foster. We're going to give local governments more control over these things. If you want to write the language, provide something to me. 
but it's got to be fair to the communities that are not being heard right now. Local government attorneys were consulted, had drafts. People are so given so much misinformation about this bill. Someone kept talking about federal lands. We don't regulate federal lands. This bill has nothing to do with federal lands. Someone said, oh, but our air quality on the western slope is really good. Why are you doing this? Because guess what? It's not on the front range. It, I am downwind of Weld County, and I have some of the worst air quality in the nation right now. Someone said, so do the right thing. I'm doing the right thing with this legislation. And anyone that wants to come to the table with real proposals that create different sidebars than we've actually put in this legislation, I'm open to it. But what I'm not open to is to kick the can down the road, ignore the communities that are asking to be heard, ignore the health impacts, ignore the environmental impacts. Because right now, we're just socializing these costs. We're, we're socializing the cost of orphan wells. We're, take, we're making people sell their minerals against their will. We're not giving local governments the same rights to determine things in their own communities that, that they have in every other area of law in Colorado. And we've let an industry be favored in a state agency like no other industry is. I have no intention, honestly, of putting oil and gas out of business, none whatsoever. I don't think this bill does it, and I kept listening for people to tell me where it does, and they didn't. They didn't actually point to the bill. I think this bill is way overdue. I think it's reasonable. I think it's being asked for. I think it's still open to people working on it. But there's not a given that industry is going to get a draft of every legislation because you guys don't do it either. And there's not a guarantee that the bill is going to take two months instead of just one month. That's plenty of time, especially when there's been a roadmap for years. The complaints have been registered for years. The ideas have been out there. These ideas were proposed in the task force. 2014 task force five years ago simply asking an industry to be regulated instead of fostered it shouldn't lead to doomsday predictions so we are still open to additional ideas and additional input but it's got to be fair to the communities that are having to carry the impacts of oil and gas, the costs of oil and gas, who are excluded from the inside game at the COGCC. It has to include their needs too. They've been asking way too long. So I'm sorry I'm so passionate about this, but it has been so long coming And I'm tired of what people were told that just isn't true. It's not right. It's not fair. It's not cool. So with all of that, I ask for your I vote on this bill. Representative Hooten. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I move Senate Bill 181 uh, with a favor favorable recommendation to the Finance Committee. Second. <laughs> Uh, moved by Representative Hooten, seconded by everybody else. All right. Ms. Dinka. Representative Srolik? Yes. Geithner? No. Yes. Lindgraf? No. Liston? No. Same? No. Sirota? Yes. Valdez? Yes. Westman? Yes. Hooten? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. That bill passes seven to four. Thank you, committee. Thank you.